Hi there. Today we're going to do my average atomic mass lab. Um, I'm kneeling in my kitchen because I want you to be able to see the counter uh, and my face at the same time. So um, a few things that we're working with. Number one, paper and a pen just to record some data. I have a digital scale that I got just from Amazon. Um, it goes out to the hundredths place, nice and tiny, battery operated. I will leave a link for it in the video description. So if you don't have a balance, I like this one. I think it's good. And then we have a sample of um, candium, which is a mystery brand new element. And we are going to figure out its average atomic mass so we can find where it fits on the periodic table. So there are three known isotopes of candium. There are dots. There are gummy bears, I got the pineapple only, <laughs> and then there's Reese's Pieces. So there's a few things that we're gonna do. This technically is the cover for the balance, but I'm going to use it as a way boat because some of these candies are sticky and I don't want them on the balance. Um, plus, if you want to eat the candy when you're done with the lab, you don't want them to touch the balance. I mean, I have them on my counter here, but the, um, Balance is oftentimes not clean and not safe for food, so just take that into account. Um, so because I have this little plastic guy here, I'm gonna hit the tear button, which is T-A-R-E, and that is going to make my um, Weibo look invisible. Now you could do this lab with um, different types of candy. You can do it with different shapes of pasta. You could even do it with coin. You could do this with nuts, chips, other types of candy. You could even do it with your wrapped Halloween candy. Um, I'm just choosing to use the stuff that I picked up at the store. Okay, so I'm going to take a, the mass of the entire sample, which is quite a lot. The dots already have stuff stuck to them. That's pretty gross. Okay, so the entire sample of candium is coming out to 47.93 grams. So the whole sample... 47.93 and then what a scientist would do is take this sample and put it into a mass spectrometer which is going to separate the isotopes by their mass so I am going to separate them by I um, and we will work with probably the dots first because they're easy to pick out they're quick um, again let me make sure this is on here and we hit tear, so it's zero now. And here are my dots. There are six dots. Okay, so six dots is 22.27 grams. Fantastic. Next I'm gonna do the gummy bears. Again, weigh boat, zero and five gummy bears. 11.40 and then lastly is the Reese's Pieces um, that's 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and 18. Okay. Oops. I just shifted that a little bit. Um, 18 Reese's Pieces came out to 14.26 grams. Okay, fantastic. I really think that's all the data that we need um, in order to figure out the average atomic mass of candium. So the idea is that we are going to want to find the mass of just one of these candies. Um, I'm actually going to Kind of show you why I had to take the mass of all of them at once. So again, we're going to use this as a way boat. We are going to tear it and I'm going to find the mass of a few different uh, of the different dots. So we're going to try this pink one first and this came out to 3.97. This one is 404. This guy is 378. 370, 322, and finally 
353. So the reason that we measure all of them at once is because obviously some of them are heavier than others. So when I measure them all together, um, I'm able to take that total mass and divide it by the six that I have to figure out what an average dot looks like or what its mass is. So that's the idea. Um, the Reese's Pieces are way more uniform, so they're probably really close to each other. And these gummy bears honestly probably fit in a mold when they make them. So those are probably close. I mean, I'm willing to test it. There's only five of them, so it should go pretty quickly. 228. 231, yeah, these are coming out closer. <clears throat> 223, 227, and lastly, 227. So yeah, the idea is that we take the mass of all of them together because we wanna make sure that the average represents you know, all of the dots. I mean, the difference between some of the dots were pretty significant, so we wanna make sure we measure all of them to get what an average dot looks like. Now, all of these are going to represent isotopes of one element, and the idea is that we want all of their mass numbers to come out to different mass numbers um, so that they truly represent different isotopes. So if you are doing this at home, if you are a classroom teacher or a parent who's setting this up, um, I do have a list of different candies, treats, whatever, so that you can choose three different things that are similar enough that's going to give you pretty good data. So I will um, link all of that information in the description below the video. All right, so let's do some calculations. We have a total sample of 47.93 grams. I have each of our samples um, masses here, and then the 6, 5, and 18 represents the quantity or the number of atoms. It's supposed to be up. <laughs> okay, so in total, um, that's 11 and 18. That's 29 atoms, if I did the math correctly. Let me double check on that. I'm not very good at mental math, so let's, um, for the sake of accuracy, yep, 29. Okay, um, so the average mass of a dot is going to be the 22.27 divided by the six atoms that we have. So I'm going to slide that over to the side. I'm going to do that in red. So let's do average mass of one isotope. All right, so the average mass of one isotope is going to be the um, total mass divided by the quantity that we have. So we would do 22.27 divided by 6 tells me that the average dot has a mass of 3.71 grams. The average on a gummy bear is 11.40 divided by the five, and that gives me 2.28 grams. And then finally, the Reese's Pieces is 14.26 divided by 18, and that gives us 0 0.79 grams. And now we are going to assign each of these a mass number. So again, we're pretending that these are isotopes of an element. Um, so its mass number is going to be its atomic mass rounded to a whole number. So when I round each of these to a whole number, this dot is gonna come out at four grams. That's gonna be its mass number. The gummy bear will be two. And then finally the Reese's piece would be a mass number of one. We'll also need to determine the percent abundance of each of these isotopes, which is going to be the total number of atoms divided by the total number in the uh, sample. So dots represents six of 29. Okay, so the percent abundance on the dots is six of the 29 total, giving me 20.69%. Nine percent. The gummy bears are five of the 29, representing 17.24%. And then lastly, the Reese's Pieces should be the rest. 18 of 29 is 6207. 62.07. This might be off a teeny tiny bit because of rounding, 
Um, and if we're off, it's going to be in like the decimals place. All right, so the average mass of a dot was 3.71. And I'm going to multiply that by its percent abundance of 20.69. Um, so there's two ways that you could set this up. You could just plug in the percentages and divide the whole thing by 100. Or what you can do is ditch this decimal and put it out over here um, because you can't put percentages in a, an equation. They have to be converted back into regular old numbers. So I'm going to do that because that's the way that I prefer to do it. I would like to see everything in here as simple as possible. So, oops, I left out a zero. <laughs> that's 26.90%. That would throw us off. Um, okay, so we are 20, 69. I like the leading zero. I think it um, is going to help me to remember that there's a decimal here and that I'm not going to accidentally plug 2,000 into the calculator. Um, so that is the data for the dots. And then I'm going to add that to the data for the gummy bear. Average mass of a gummy bear was 228. And we will multiply that by the percent abundance converted into a decimal. So that's 1724. Sorry <laughs> about the handwriting. Um, and then finally, we have the Reese's Pieces, which averaged 0.79 times its percent abundance written as a decimal, 62. Oh, seven. I'm just going to fit it. <laughs> All right. So we can put this in the calculator in one line, which is why I like um, converting the decimal of uh, the percent into a decimal to begin with. So my average atomic mass came out to 1.65. And to me, this makes sense. The reason this makes sense is because um, even though we had some dots here, which were very heavy compared to the other two, uh, its mass number was double the gummy bears, uh, they represent a decently small percentage of the population. They're only 21%. Meanwhile, the gummy bears and the Reese's Pieces are way closer in mass, and they make up collectively 79% uh, of the isotopes. So they're going to pull that mass down. So having a mass of 1.65 um, to me makes sense. So that would be our average atomic mass of candium, the imaginary isotope. So again, um, the link to the balance, if you're interested in doing this live yourself, is in the description, as well as some masses I've collected of different candies, treats, whatever, so that you can put together these isotopes into a lab for yourself. The idea is that you want these um, mass numbers to be different, because if they rounded to the same number, then realistically they would be the same isotope. Um, so we want the mass numbers to come out different, just like mine did here. Uh, if there's any questions, please leave them in the comments section below the video. Subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson, and I'll see you there. Bye!